Okay, this is the Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure lesson. And Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure is a very simple, elegant little um, ditty, so to speak, that equates individual pressures of gases, okay, to their total. So we're eventually we're going to come up with something pressure total in a container. And we know that gases in the same container are going to behave the same. We already know by Avogadro's hypothesis that equal volumes of two different gases under the same conditions of temperature pressure are going to have the same number of molecules. And if they have the same number of molecules, they will have the same, okay, individual pressures. Case in point, I've got, a let's say, a box that's one liter of hydrogen. And let's say I've got another container of equal size, the best that I can draw, of helium. Okay, well, these containers, okay, have the same uh, temperature and pressure. Now, if I was to mix hydrogen into the helium container, they'd be occupying the same volume, they would have the same conditions, therefore, they would be exhibiting similar characteristics, same particles. So if we were to have a one liter container, and let's say we have one particle of hydrogen and one particle of helium, okay? Two particles, okay? They're both one liter. They're both existing in the same conditions because they're in the same container. Couldn't we make the idea that the total pressure of the tank is equal to the pressure due to the hydrogen plus the pressure due to the helium. And we call this pressure due to each individual gas a partial pressure. A partial pressure by definition is the pressure of a gas in a container, in a mixture, that would be the pressure if all the other gases weren't there. So if, um, let's pretend there was uh, 0.5 atm of atmospheres in this container and there was 0.5 atm of atmospheres in this container. Notice I have the same pressure because they're the same number of particles. Pressure is due to collisions. If I mix them together the total pressure, 0.5 atm plus 0.5 atm, have to equal the pressure total, which is equal to 1 atm. Now, why does this work? It seems very simplistic. Why does it have to be Dalton's Law? Well, it works because uh, of Avogadro's hypothesis. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, okay, I can spell, Dalton, Dalton is the law of partial pressure, okay, is an application of Avogadro's law. How is that? Well, the only way this works is if we have equal number of particles. One particle, one particle, two particles. We doubled the number of particles or molecules we doubled the pressure. So it's interesting because we know under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, and in Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, we're always dealing with mixtures of a gas, of different gases in a container. So because we have different gases in a container, these gases are always under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. Therefore, Avogadro's Law, okay, works. They're under the same conditions. And if they're under the same conditions, because they're in the what? Same container. Then, this is very important, there's a proportionate amount of molecules, there's a proportionate amount of pressure. Now, a better way to say that is a fractional amount. Okay? So we say there's a proportional amount.
or a proportional relationship. Okay, it's a direct relationship here. Okay, pressure, okay, is proportionate to changes in volume. Pressure is proportionate to changes in moles. Okay, volume and moles are interrelated if the gases are under the same conditions, and they always are in a container. So we're going to come back to this proportional amount, and I like the word also fractional amount. And what I mean by the fractional amount is this. If I know, and let's go back to my original, if I have 50% of gas hydrogen and 50% of helium in this container, I don't know why I drew it over there, then 50% of the total pressure is due to the particles that make up 50% of the total particles, which is hydrogen. So these guys are 50% apiece. So that idea of fractional amount, okay, so what's proportional is how many particles, moles, and the volume they take up, okay, very, very important. So pressure, volume, and moles are all proportionate in Dalton's law of partial pressures, where the total pressure equals the individual pressures. Why? Because we know that volume is equal to moles times a constant, Avogadro's law. Okay, now let's derive this relationship because Dalton's law is basically pressure total is equal to the partial pressure of one gas plus the partial pressure of gas B. Let's look at this a little better. Okay, let's take it apart. Let's look at uh, a mixture of gases. What I mean by that is you have a container and we have gas A and B gas now mixed together so if we draw it another way oops edit undo okay so we draw it another way I have gas A and I guess B now I'm drawing equal amounts, and I'm drawing them staying in their equal containers, but that's not true. They, they equally mix. But let's get to the, uh, the derivation. So if I look at the pressure of A, PV equals NRT, and I look at what pressure is equal to moles RT over V. Now, what's going to be the same? All right, well, temperature is going to be the same. Volume is going to be the same because they're flying around the same container. They're not really getting in the way themselves because these guys are infinitely small. So they're both taking up the same container. This is 10 liters. Both gases are occupying 10 liters, believe it or not. R, of course, is a constant. What's changing is N. And I'll put NT here. This is the total. And this is PT, pressure total. So the pressure total is equal to the total number of moles. Okay. Which is equal to... The pressure, let's say, of A equal to the moles of A times RT over V, okay, plus the moles of, no, I shouldn't do that. Okay, total pressure is equal to this plus mole B RT over V. So that's what it equals. So this total pressure, okay, is equal to this. All right. Now, if you notice something, the R, T, and V are all staying the same because they're in the same container. So in, in, initially, or inevitably, these cancel out. So before we cancel these guys out, let's look what we got here. We have pressure total which is the total number of moles in our container, is equal to this. Now, this is equal to the partial pressure. Let's get that out of the way. The partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B, right? Because this is equal to a pressure unit. So this is 
the pressure of A, PV equals NRT, this is the pressure of B. So that's where Dalton's law comes from. Understanding that this is PV equals NRT over V, so this is equal to a P. This is the pressure of A, and this is the pressure of B, gas B. This is gas A, and this is the moles of A. So that's where it, it's the moles of B. So essentially, pressure total equals the pressure due to A plus B. It may seem very simple, but that's, that's the law. Now there's some more to this. So let's continue on to the next page. Let's continue right here. Let's get out of the green. Okay, so I said that there's a fractional or proportional relationship between pressure and molecules and volume and moles and all of this. Where does that come from? Well, let's take our pressure total, which again is equal to the moles total in my container, R, T over V, and let's take my pressure of A, partial pressure of A, which again is equal to the moles of A, RT over V. And let's look at the fractional relationship. Look at the total pressure. Let's do uh, NT, RT over V. That's really PT. And let's have that, okay? And let's have, uh, this is total. And let's have this be NA, RT over V. What I just did, party people, is I've taken the total moles, put them on the bottom, and I took the um, the part of A and put that at the, t at the top. So this is total, when you think about it, part over total. And what do I get here? I'm going to get a fraction. Okay, now before we do that, let's, let's cancel our fun Let's cancel some stuff out here. Temperature cancels because they're under the same conditions of temperature. Okay, R, okay, and we have the volumes. They're occupying the same space. So all of this cancels out to B, okay, so uh, to be equal the fraction of the moles of A over the moles total. Okay, and what does that equal? That equals some fraction. We call that a mole fraction, uh, signified by a big X of A. So this is the mole fraction of A. This is the fraction of total moles. Let's think about this for a second. If, in this case, half of the particles, therefore half of the moles, are A, then the mole fraction in this case would equal, okay, there are six particles total, or six moles, and I have three. Let's just make some numbers up. I would get a mole fraction of A to equal 0.5. What does that mean? That means 50% of all my particles are due to A. So shouldn't 50% of my gas? So we're going to use this fractional relationship, mole fraction, which is nothing more than moles of one gas over the total moles. And this fraction of moles, okay, is going to equal the fraction of the pressure or a fraction of the volume, if you want, because of Avogadro's hypothesis. All right, so how do we use this? Okay, well, if I have the, let's go back to this, I have pressure um, uh, of A, partial pressure of A, which is what this was, over the pressure total, okay, equals my mole fraction of A. Now, if you rearrange this and solve for partial pressure of A, algebra suggests that it's going to be the partial pressure of A equals the mole fraction of A times the total pressure. Very important relationship here. Think with me. If this is the partial pressure, okay, times by the mole fraction, that's really the percentage of the molecules, that's your total pressure. So think with me, what's the partial pressure? Well, if this is 1 atm, the total pressure, put that right there. What do you think the mole fraction here is? Well, just like I said, it's 
So 0.5 times 1, the partial pressure of A is 0.5 atm. Notice the mole fraction does not have a unit. A fraction, okay, this would be 3 moles over 6 moles. Moles would cancel. So those are some very important relationships, okay? Let's quickly go to your Regents Land Ditto. All right, uh, I thought about this really quickly. Let's, I'm, I'm going to make two lectures. So this is the end of the basics of Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, okay, its derivations. I would like you to try the Regents Land Ditto uh, for the, besides this Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, try one through five. And I'm going to make a second video in my son's music lesson tonight uh, for that ditto. And I would like you to try that. And then definitely try one and three of the honors land. Now, the one and three is going to incorporate uh, especially this idea of mole fraction, okay, times the total pressure. So try that on your own. And I'm going to have a quick video of the second lecture. There will be no form tonight. Um, on how to go through those questions and maybe give you a glimpse, okay? All right.